Now, thanks for being with us here on Morning Live. President Cyril Ramaphosa reaffirmed the ANC's support of the Zonda Commission of Inquiry during the opening of the two-day National Executive Committee. Um, the, meanwhile, the commission has set aside this week to hear evidence uh, from former President Jacob Zuma. Now, Zuma has said that he will not appear before the commission despite a constitutional court ruling. And two of the key issues at this weekend's NEC meeting were, of course, to try to persuade Zuma to appear before the commission and to decide whether ANC Secretary General Esma Khashule should step aside in order to deal with criminal charges against him. Now, the latter is based on a resolution that was adopted in 2017 during the ANC's 54th National Conference at Nazrek. And to discuss some of these developments, we joined by political analyst Professor Susan Boysen, who is also a visiting professor at Wits University and a director of research at uh, MISTRA, the uh, Mapungubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection. Professor Boysen, always good to speak to you. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sakina. Thank you very much. So let's, let's start with that uh, NEC meeting and, and perhaps the statement that was released. And it was interesting reading it and the wording. Uh, you, you could just sense the caution in all that was said there. Yes, indeed. You know, opening and a bit later on, there are references to it having been a difficult meeting, a meeting at which there were tactical differences but overall good, but encouraging. And so that is really the statement wanting to give effect to what was probably a very, very heated, very divisive, very split meeting through the weekend. But it is important that overall there is support for endorsement of the Zondo Commission. There was There is clear-cut progress on this guidelines for stepping aside when their members are asked on to voluntarily, and that is important still, they're asked to voluntarily do that. So yes, there is progress, but uh, there is so much space left for tricks, the usual kind of tricks, and for fight back and push back. But one thing certain for pres former President Jacob Zuma is Ray Stalingrad's strategy of avoiding court appearances, avoiding giving evidence, has probably run out of tarmac. So just with regard to what the NEC meeting actually achieved, so the long and short of it, if you will, uh, is that those who were accused and are facing criminal charges must step aside. We already knew this. There was a resolution in place, but of course it's been a painful process for the ANC to actually get people to step aside. Now it's talk about voluntarily stepping aside. If people were to voluntarily step aside, one would imagine they would have done so by now. So what did this actually achieve? You know, it's only going to work, it's only going to be more than another good sounding statement if we actually see it being followed through. We do not know whether the fact that the ANC is an elections year and whether they will really be judged by whether they are prepared to follow through on those big undertakings that have given them the 2019 electoral victory. So that is a small point of change. The other small point of change might be that this NEC statement suggests that the NEC is falling in behind Cyril Ramaphosa more definitively than they have done to date. But these indeed are tentative movements unless there is a true change of heart in the NEC, that is not going to happen. And the NEC is going to limp forward into elections and into questions as to who actually governs that body. So it's small steps of progress, but it is far from definitive. So a question that we ask perhaps more regularly, uh, just post the, uh, the Nazareth conference, haven't asked it so much of late. What would you say are the balance of forces right now in the ANC? You know, when we get to the NEC, and that is obviously the crucial body, I would say it may be marginally more in favor of Cyril Ramaphosa than it had been in the past, else we would not have seen a repeat of this tactic around releasing statements after the NEC meetings. We've seen Cyril Ramaphosa on a few occasions addressing the nation directly this, day, this time around, a specific statement being issued in his name, 
in previous years, in many of the previous NECs as well, it would have been left to the to Latouri House post them a day or two after the meeting to address the media, to brief the media. That is no longer left in the hands of the Secretary General of the ANC. We also saw it in Jesse Barty's email, an apology to the Zondo Commission, to parts to Deputy Chief Justice Zondo for not having, not wanting to be seen to have attacked him directly. We saw that issued Saturday nights. And these are small indications that there is a change in the air. But still, these are small steps. And yet, the Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, if there is a change in their positions of power, in their strident previous support for not just themselves as Secretary General, but also for President, former President Jacob Zuma, that is a small cha and significant change. And that would be for, important for the ANC to pursue that dream of that vision that they had at NASRAE 2017 of uniting and renewing the ANC. But it is small steps, but significant. Probably that NEC, the crucial body, somewhat more supportive of President Cyril Ramaphosa. So let's pick up on what has been said, what's coming out of the engine room of the ANC, uh, the Secretary General's office. As you pointed out there, the Deputy uh, Secretary General, Jesse Duarte, has since apologized for um, a statement that she made. I think it was an opinion piece in The Maverick last week. And, and what she said there was, uh, to quote her, uh, she said... It is worrying that democratic centralism is now the subject of a commission led by a judge who, with respect, practices his craft based on narrow parameters of existing laws, unquote. As you pointed out, she has since apologized to the DCJ who chairs the commission, uh, saying that she didn't mean to have a go at him personally. But then um, Ace Mahashule, who is the secretary general of the party, uh, he's on record saying, and I quote, uh, President Zuma's decision, um, if he chooses not to go to the commission, I respect that. So this is what the SG's office has put out there. And what does that mean? You know, are they behind the commission or are they behind President Zuma? <laughs> Professor Boysen? Okay, it seems um, we may have just uh, lost uh, that connection to Professor Boysen there. Um, I think Prof it got back. Okay, you're back. So I was Thank basically you. just outlining uh, some of what the, the uh, Secretary General of the ANC has said and some of what uh, his deputy uh, SG has said, uh, which of course she has now gone on to apologize to the DCJ. But what is said cannot be unsaid. And these are things yes. that are now in the public domain. And you know as well as I do that in politics, perceptions are all powerful. Yes, indeed. That, uh, that resistance against the Commission from that level in ANC was registered. And of course, that gives additional support to it bosses from President Zuma's resistance against the Commission. But it is significant that those public forces of support, displays of support for Zuma have been declining. If you are aware, are you, if any person is challenging a central commission like the, like the Zonda Commission of Inquiry, acting on a constitutional court judgment, that the stakes do not get higher than that. And what presidents, former President Zuma have in his camp is the MKMBA forces, uh, Secretary General of the ANC, who may be forced to step aside, even if he probably won't do that voluntarily. So, and these are very few, very select, very limited forces of support. But Jacob Zuma is in a corner. Uh, beyond having a sick note, possibly for today, we'll have to see whether he appears there. There is very, he's, 
resources are limited, his support is limited. Very few people after the NEC meeting will come out specifically and directly challenging him on that. So what remains for him, and that is where we sit with the real crisis, is that it may be a constitutional political crisis when if he decides now he goes for the constitutional court, he defies it, and it's possibly going to get you that today. And that he tries to pull down the pillars of the democratic order in South Africa while he is going down. So it is not going to be any quiet going down and succumbing to the authority of the either constitutional court and or the Zondo Commission. And that is whether they will be a bigger, the question whether they will be a bigger upwelling of support for the former president. But the, the indications are they will not be. But it doesn't mean that he himself cannot be doing incredible damage. Mm. And, uh, you know, the president of the ANC, um, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, of course, reaffirming the ANC support of the Zonda Commission. Uh, the ANC, many would say, has been on trial at this particular commission, given all the evidence that we've heard, uh, whereby ANC members have been implicated, where it would seem as though some of the funds found their way to fund some of the party, um, you know, activities, programs. So in that way, uh, talk to us about what your expectations are at the time when President uh, Ramaphosa actually goes to the commission and goes there as president of the ANC. Yes, indeed, that is going to be such a crucial moment. And it's being left to very late in the process, which probably indicates the Zondo Commission is very aware of the political sensitivity, volatility of what lies ahead. It will definitely have implications for the ANC for how the questions will be raised. And there will be huge question marks by all indications given previous sets of influence, evidence at the Commission that the ANC will be implicated in terms of on the grounds of how did it manage to barter contracts for big donations to the ANC as well. We heard several persons, Nomvula Mokonyane was just one of them, who they said openly that that was the way for the ANC raising funds, paybacks for contracts granted. And if the Zonda Commission investigators have done their work, and if the people who are leading the evidence will be prepared to go that full way, the full way, then they're going to be very embarrassing and very serious questions, which will have to be answered under oath. And there are also uh, some indications in yesterday's NEC statement that the ANC is aware of it, knows that it will have implications for the organization and its credibility. So let's just take a look at that step aside rule again, uh, <laughs> Professor Boysen. So you have, um, that is of course a resolution of the party, a conference resolution for that matter. But then you have um, Kusela Diko, um, and she has been suspended for how many months, uh, forget to count now. Um, and she of course is the president's spokesperson. Then you have someone like uh, Bongani Bongo. Uh, he's um, uh, is still in his position as a member of parliament. Uh, there's finance, Deputy Minister Masondo, still in the president's uh, uh, um, a cabinet there, executive, I should say, uh, Mahashule argued he doesn't work for government. And it would seem nobody is going to step aside willingly, even though people have been asked to do so voluntarily. So what what's going to happen? Because unless the ANC is decisive, it seems as though we're going to have more of the same. So what needs to happen here, Prof? Yes, unless that stepping aside is going to be taken seriously, there are going to be very serious crises. It's, it will be a serious crisis for the ANC, even more serious than it is at this time. Of course, when some of these people, there are cabinet people involved, the other people in high positions involved, if by the end of next month, and that is what the NEC statement indicates, those guidelines, but then 
we must remember it says guidelines. It doesn't say it's a new law. It says, but the end of next month, these guidelines really come into the place and ANC wants to make sure it takes forward the trust that people have given, uh, put in it, in its previous electoral mandates. Then there will have to be serious steps and it will look like a battlefield in the ANC. Both organizationally, people stepping aside, in Parliament, MPs staying, stepping aside, maybe even a few at cabinet level being looked at, at when are you stepping aside? But if come in end of next month, and that's if that voluntarily voluntary guidelines that the ANC is now referring to is given serious effect, it will look like a battlefield around the ANC in government and organizationally. But yet, there will probably be an ANC that has much more credibility and sustained legitimacy if they do take that seriously. But then, a guideline we have learned in the ANC, combined with voluntarily being called on to step aside, that goes up like a lead balloon. And just a final question, Prof, with all of this playing out, what does it mean? How significant is it? if the ANC is seen to not be, to be able to abide by its own resolutions? It is egg on the face to put it lightly because the ANC so much depends for its continuous legitimacy on being seen to be honorable, to be credible, to have integrity and to be governed by a strong core of leadership. A political party that does not have that and trades as its main currency on struggle credentials and days when it was a better and a more ethical organization. That could maybe still help the ANC through one or two elections, limping but not in a great shape. But the ANC could still survive, but it is definitely an indication, it will be an indication that this is not a party with long-term life. However, if a little miracle, little ANC-style miracle happens and it does come through and it asserts this and subjects its own leadership to those standards and ideals that it professes to publicly, then that could be indeed be what this NEC Statements also alludes to the strengthening and the reinvigoration of the ANC. Professor Susan Poison, thanks so much for your time and helping us unpack what has happened at the ANC NEC over the weekend. And of course, anticipating the appearance of uh, former President uh, Jacob Zuma at the Zonda Commission. Professor Susan Boyson um, is with MISTRA. She's a director of research there and of course also a political analyst. Let's take a quick.